welcome to Living with the Ancients. Happy, happy early February. We're past the midpoint of winter, um, but it's still wonderfully brisk out here. Not quite nose hair freezing temperatures, but pretty darn close. <laughs> so we're gonna be hanging out here at the primitive shelter for a few days, uh, doing some winter foraging and enjoying the, the nice brisk air. Uh, we built this debris hut in the fall in hopes to return here in the winter and do some camping in it. Um, and then last time I was here, which was about a month ago, a month and a half ago, I noticed that a couple of coyotes had been using it as their crash pad. I could see from the tracks where a mother coyote had come and dug out the door to get an entrance. Meanwhile, the pup had crawled up on top and she was kind of squirreling around, uh, checking out the scene. I know they used it at least a couple of times, um, which is, you know, I'm very much flattered that they found that wonderfully warm, dry space to enjoy. However, now it has been disturbed and uh, the door, which was sealed, has been open. So we'll see if it's still uh, going to be, you know, worthy of me sleeping in there overnight in single digit uh, weather. So, anyways, it's an experiment. We'll see what happens. I'm flattered the coyotes used it and uh, we'll just go with the flow. So what we're going to do is basically just clean up camp, get the snow out of here, try to salvage some leaves there for the door in hopes that I can actually get it to plug. <laughs> and um, then uh, we'll start doing some foraging uh, once we get a fire going. So stick around. I hope you enjoy and uh, get outside. It is gorgeous. Okay, so we got everything just about cleaned up here. A few more little bits of snow need to be removed, but it's time to go collect some firewood and some boughs to put down on the floor here uh, to make a nice cozy spot to sleep or hang out by the fire. It's a fine day in early February, and if we want to stay out here for too long without moving around, we're going to need a fire. So we're going to ask our good friend here the beech tree if we can't borrow some of these leaves. The beech are marquescent. Uh, they evolve from a uh, southern climate so they'll still hold their leaves longer than the other deciduous trees here. And because of the wind they are nice and dry so they're gonna make a perfect tinder bundle. So we're gonna basically collect a bunch of these beech leaves, maybe some grasses and uh, some birch bark and then we're gonna get some nice uh, pine twigs and other stuff to get our, our fire going. And then hopefully we can find a nice standing dead tree uh, to make our bow drill from. So, we'll see what happens here. It's always a test playing in the woods, uh, experimenting and uh, you know learning from each and every day. So I hope you're having a good one. Check it out, stick around, here we go. So we have here a balsam fir, nice and dead, and hopefully dry on the inside. Uh, it's been dead for more than a season or two. Um, you can tell all the teeny tiniest branches are broken. So it might actually be too far gone, um, but we'll open it up and see, see what we got. sweating now, no sweating, no sweating allowed.
Okay, so we got all the parts ready to construct our bow drill kit. We have the balsam fir, our wonderful friend there. We got our whacking stick made of the beach. And so we're gonna make our board and our spindle now. And then hopefully get a nice fire going before it gets too dark. I figured I would get the fire going before I collected all the boughs for the bottom for the floor of the shelter. So that way we can ensure some nice warm. <sighs> She is. <laughs> Getting more and more round as we speak. Oh wow. It's a pileated woodpecker. Boy, isn't he beautiful. Oh my god. I gotta show you guys this guy. Wow, look at him. Wow. So cool to have a visit by a pileated woodpecker. Or really any critter for that matter. Okay, let's get this thing done. Get this fire going. Got some daylight left, but not too much, so. Gotta get her down, baby. Get her down. Okay, so we're pretty much ready to start our fire. We built a, an upside down fire here. So a bunch of logs underneath to get it up out of the snow and then a very uh, loose teepee fire structure. It's like a teepee fire structure with a bad hair day. <laughs> it's a little funky. But it should work just fine as long as we can get a coal and get our tinder bundle to ignite. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna put some logs down here to get up off the snow so that way when I'm generating the coal, uh, we don't have to deal with that moisture getting in there, okay? All right. And to add to it, I got a bunch of bark from the yellow birch. So we're gonna just fold that up on there. Nice platform. It'll be high and dry out of the snow. Some smoke, this is a good sign. Okay. There is hope, there is hope. There's lots, there is always hope. Okay, now we're gonna carve our notch here. Okay. And hopefully get this fire going. I see smoke. I see some smoke. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yes, baby. Oh my God. Be careful now. Be very careful now, lad. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank God. Whew, it's hard when you're tired. Man. Oh. 
Okay, so we got a big juicy coal. I'm just gonna ever so gently just nurse into being here. Okay, these extra super super fine. Alright baby, I love you, thank you, oh my god, thank you, thank you. There she goes. Okay. Come on now. Come on, baby. Okay. Okay. Get us right up in here. Oh yeah. She wants to burn. Thank God for that. God, I'm so grateful. Oh, man. I was just feeling so tired today. So grateful. So there you go. Even in the winter time, you can get a coal. If all the conditions are just right and you find just the right stuff. And always have lots of gratitude. <laughs> and I am full of that right now. <laughs> it's supposed to be clear tonight so hopefully um, you know I don't have to worry about that I could set up a tarp but I think I'm just gonna kind of hang out under the stars tonight and enjoy the beautiful forest So the fire is going now nicely, getting a bed of coals, and they're not just getting drenched by the snow that was in the bottom. So I'm gonna go and collect some more firewood and some other stuff, and um, while I'm doing that, I think I'm gonna make some tea. In this case, um, it's hemlock tea. No, not the poison hemlock. I do love life, <laughs> even with its ups and downs. <laughs> yeah, you know, a friend of mine once said, uh, too bad all life's ups and downs can't be between the sheets, you know. <laughs> but anyways, this is actually Sugei canadensis. So the, the northern uh, hemlock or eastern hemlock. Um, yeah, I guess eastern hemlock is one common name. Um, so it's incredibly, incredibly good for you. Lots of vitamin C and other nutrients. I swear to God, I drink it and just like washes over my brain oh it's so it's such a soothing um but also kind of stimulating tea not like caffeine but um very invigorating so i'm gonna stick a bunch of those in my water bottle along with some snow and 
when I come back, hopefully I have a nice bit of tea. Nice bit of tea. Right. That's right. Gotta have some tea when we're hanging out by the fire. I'm gonna stuff this baby. She's oh. Hopefully I can also get some more stuff to consume this evening because I'm getting a little hungry. My metabolism is pretty much through the roof. Uh, I do way too much physical training. I'm actually, I've been feeling so exhausted all day today because I did four intervals classes over a period of like three days. And um, so I do that, I do two intervals classes in each day. And it's not like, you know, 20 minutes worth of intervals. It's more like <coughs> 45. And I can feel my muscles are really fatigued. And uh, I'm sore and I feel a little brain dead, like, you know. So hopefully this will bring me back up to speed. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, look at these. Them some apples. Ah. Gorgeous. Ooh, and some of them just fell, so they're not even stuck in the ice. Oh, it must have been that wind that brought them down. Wow, this is awesome. This is super awesome. Oh. Look at all these things, man. Look at these. They're so beautiful. Oh, my God. Apple sauce coming up. Woo, that one's already applesauce. Holy shamoly. earlier so I'm a little nervous to be out here but fortunately I only heard a little adjustments and no like poof, I'm going under so this is good it looks like I'm gonna have a sweet carbohydrate rich meal coming up <laughs> so the tea water is starting to bubble oh maybe not bubble yet but just steaming. <laughs> Woo, and this is a smoky spot. Usually the wind is from a slightly different pitch than it is tonight, so it's coming right up into my face. But that's okay. Keeping the bugs off, you know. <laughs> yeah, like there's any bugs this time of year. But oh I'm happy. It's a nice fire and such a beautiful night. I don't think there's a cloud in the sky. I am so blessed. So blessed. The moon is just a sliver. Just a fingernail. Oh my god, it's so beautiful. So as long as I can heat this water without it falling into the fire, I'll be all set. Eventually I'm going to figure out some, get some rocks positioned just right. So that we can set it down in there. I gotta get some more coals built up first. Ooh. Oh, there she goes. Oh, but she didn't spill, thank goodness. Easy now, easy baby. <laughs> Go easy now. So our apples are Pretty much done to perfection here. And uh, we're gonna see how they taste. Mmm, yum, 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 apple mush. Mmm. Ooh. Mildly fermented. <laughs> but I don't think I'll be getting drunk tonight. <laughs> Not quite hard cider. 
That's for sure. But wow. Delicious. Oh, mm. oh. I'm hot. Ha ha la 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 la. Mmm. 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 Yum yum. So delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wow. Mm. Yeah, boy, when you're hungry, just about everything tastes good. <laughs> but this is especially good. Mm. 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 Ooh. Especially where it kind of burnt to the bottom. <clears throat> kind of caramelized a little bit. It makes it a little extra sweet. Definitely yummy. <laughs> wow. Mmm. 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 Finger looking good. <laughs> wow. What a great blessing to see those apples. When I was walking out here, I was like, is that an apple tree? Looks like little Christmas bulbs on that thing. Sure enough, a wild apple. Thank you, dear, for pooping that seed out however many years ago. <laughs> I may have this meal right now. Mmm. Yeah, this would be nice. Ah, my meal before bedtime. It's probably like freaking seven o'clock, but I wouldn't mind passing out right now. Have that and then have some of my tea. It's so good. Ooh, and it is so good. Mm. I don't know if you've ever had hemlock tea, but it's quite delicious. Holy cow, yeah. So freaking good. Wow. I'm actually getting kind of full. Good morning, campers. What a glorious morning it is. I can't believe how warm I was last night, actually, sleeping on top of these this bed of logs. It's incredibly comfortable when you're really tired. <laughs> I'll tell you that. It's a good thing I'm not the princess in the pea. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, it was very nice, actually. The coyotes were singing, the owls were singing, the stars were bright as can be. What a beautiful night. Man, you know, so simple. Simple things in life, I think, that really make me happy. So I am just so grateful to be alive today. And I'm a little hungry. So today is all about getting some food. We can throw the, sh the tarp up here for the shelter pretty easily if it's going to snow. Um, and I can fluff up this mattress. The debris hut was not an option. It was too frozen in there um, from the disturbance of the coyotes. But that's okay. I'm glad they're using it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So I'm gonna reheat this applesauce. Ooh, I need some water, I think. It's gonna burn. <laughs> and uh, 
then oh, do a little joint mobility to warm up my body, get my stuff flowing here. And then go out and wander this land and see if I can't find some grub. I know there are, there might be some other wild apple trees around. Um, I don't know if any of them have fruit or not. And I know there's uh, some beech tree or birch and um, some basswood. Maybe I can get some buds. Um, and a whole mess of other things. We'll see what we can find. But for now, just waking up slow. <laughs> Good morning. <coughs> so, when you wake up a little cold, a little stiff in the woods, you don't want to stretch your muscles because they're cold muscles and that's how you can damage them. But you do want to get your joints moving. So, that's what we're going to do right now. Little joint mobility sequence. Little head to toe. Uh -oh. Wakey wakey for the body body. All right. And I find that you get the most I get the most benefit out of this if I sync my breath and my movement together. There we go right there. <laughs> Snap, crackle, pop. Oh, my neck. Oh, yeah. Oh, it feels good. Oh. And the shoulders. Wake it up, baby, wake it up. Gotta get that blood moving, especially when it's eight degrees or however freaking cold it is. <laughs> Shoulders, elbows, yeah, yeah. Do your elbow, elbow, elbows, elbows, oh yeah, and do your wrist. <laughs> Side, side, 
the side. Oh, God. Get them knees, get those knees. Oh. Do it. Oh. 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 Shake your hands and the elbows and your shoulders and your face. the head. And just go down the body. Oh. Shake it all out. Wow. I am much warmer than I was when I started. Oh, I like looking at you. Here comes the sun. So beautiful. So beautiful. So I have my digging stick here, it's going to make the extraction of any tubers that aren't completely frozen in the ground um, much, much easier, or actually possible I should say. And also it will double over as a nice throwing stick, so hopefully if I see some more squirrels, catch them off guard, I can maybe harvest a little meal out of those little buggers, so that would be nice. <laughs> okay, so what we have here is a little cattail marsh. And things are pretty frozen up, but there's still some running water, so there's hope that perhaps I could dig down and get some of those wonderful carbohydrate-rich rhizomes. So <clears throat> we'll see what happens um, and how far I can actually dig down in. It's always an experiment. Life is a big experiment. Now I gotta do this. I gotta do this without getting wet. <laughs> I just heard the ice shift. Looks like there is actually hope of extracting some. However, the only ones I can actually get to are in the running water, not frozen um, out of the water. So I run the risk of falling into the water. Joy to the world. Hopefully that doesn't happen. <laughs> Let us pray. Not very stable. Much more stable. Okay. No, blow. Spread some seeds. Say thank you so much for this gift of this food. Thank you, thank you. God bless you, cat tail. Now, oh shoot, no, I can't see what I just the root from. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Augustifolia, also known as the cattail. And the ones that were in the ice were, it was way too frozen to actually get at it unless I had it chopping it with my axe, which I could have, but I'd rather not dull it. So in this case, we got some starches here uh, for later tonight. Okay, so rather than soak my pants by putting those in my pocket, I'm gonna take one of my scarves here with the shemag, and I'm gonna use this as my collecting bag for the day. That way I can dry it out later. No problemo. I know this doesn't look like much, but uh, what we actually have here is a blackberry. And these little buds here are very much edible. Um, just as the berries are, um, these you can eat and enjoy. So there's not a whole lot to them, but... Mm, they're kind of crunchy. Mm. Oh, tastes like buttered popcorn. Weird. Mmm. Wow. Those are good. Mmm. Mm. Wow. I have all over the ground here are these spruce tips. And the very, very end. Mmm. It's almost like a miniature pine cone. And wow, is that ever sweet. You see this little thing right there. That's what I want to eat right there. Mmm. It is so sweet. Mmm. Man, if I had a handful of those, <laughs> that'd be amazing. So what we have here is the, the white pine. Because you can see it has five needles in each bundle. Okay, and it makes an incredibly nutritious tea, super high in vitamin C, and um, actually it can be also used as a medicine if you're super constipated. These little papery sheaths there, if you leave those on and you make uh, a very strong decoction where you boil it for like, you know, 20 minutes or so, simmer it for 20 minutes, and then you just let it cool, um, that will actually help you take a nice healthy dump. So. Um, not only will it prevent scurvy, but it will help you if you get backed up too. I'm gonna actually grab some of these. Minus the papery sheets. <laughs> I'm not having any trouble with that just yet, so. <laughs> Thank you, my friend, for these gifts. So what we have here is our friend Burdock, Arctium Minus. And most people think it's just kind of a pain in the butt. Because <laughs> it sticks to everything. But, <laughs> it's actually quite an amazing plant. It has multiple edible parts. The pith of the stalk, the root, and these little seeds. These little black seeds in here. Once they're sprouted, um, they can be very healthy healthy meal. So I'm definitely going to be gathering some of these and every time I gather some I'm going to spread a few seeds too. <laughs> and this one here <coughs> is lamb's quarters and there's some nice little seeds in there that we could eat up. They'd be good to soak with the, the burdock. So what I have right here is willow, and you can eat these tendrils here, or these uh, small branches, but you want to keep in mind that they contain salicylic acid, which is like aspirin, so it's kind of more of an edible, or excuse me, more of a medicinal than an edible, 
Um, but nonetheless, it is edible. And it's very, very bitter. I don't have a headache, so I'm not going to chew too much. I've heard of people chewing on a bunch of these and actually getting a little sick from them, so use that more as a medicine if you have pain than to fill your belly. <laughs> so what we have here is a young birch tree, a young yellow birch, Betula alleghaniensis, and these buds are also quite edible. Mmm, kind of tastes mmm like wintergreen. Quite delicious, and you can take one of these branches off here and use it as a toothbrush if you need to. So it will partly freshen your breath to boot. You can also tap these trees um, for the sap and make syrup. Um, not one this small, obviously, but. Um, and you can eat the bark, the inner bark. Make flour with it. Apparently from a pound of the flour, it has about 500 calories. It doesn't have the gluten of wheat, um, so you'd want to mix it with something, but um, it can provide some calories and some wonderful nutrients. One not to be excluded from our foraging weekend here. <laughs> and see, here's our friend the apple tree. With all the apples frozen in the ice. Digging sticks, not only a digging stick, but a whacking stick. <laughs> They're rolling just like marbles. <laughs> As you can see here are the apples. You can see also there's a little coyote hair stuck to it, so a bit they've been coming and eating some of the the drops that are still edible. Mildly fermented. So between these and all the burdock seeds should be a fairly nutritious, delicious meal tonight. Okay, so here we have a nice starchy stew in the making. Uh, we're gonna have these nice wild apples, the cattail rhizome. We have burdock seeds, and we also have um, goose foot or lamb's quarters, as it's called commonly. Um, some of those seeds in there too. So, should be a nice filling meal. Um, not a lot of protein, but uh, this time we were just focusing on wild edible plants, so there's some protein in there, but not like you'd get from a squirrel or a rabbit or something like that. Or maybe the porcupine that lives next door. So, let's see how it comes out. And we have our wonderful pine needle tea brewing up in here. Yes, we do. Well, time to enjoy the fruits of our foraging. They don't melt my glove. I melted it earlier. <laughs> Man, plastic. No good. So we got a little plate here. Cattail. while so I shouldn't get the shits from it. <laughs> I ate cattail raw out of a pond once and uh, there was a bunch of ducks living there and I definitely got the shits. Um, <laughs> I didn't even think about it. A lot of stringy stuff in there but there's a lot of good starch in there too. From what I gather uh, one of the best ways to prepare it is um, to put it in water and then, um, you know, kind of pound it, you know, really shake it up, stir it up really well, so that all that starch, all this, like, starchy stuff here, mmm, yeah, 
Mm. It just comes right off those fibers. Mm. 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 It's kind of gritty. Big mashed potato. That's really good. Mm. It doesn't taste like swamp dirt <laughs> as much as one would expect. that point where the stalk meets the rhizome. Mm. 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 That's the sweetest part. Mm. Mm. I don't even think you have to be hungry to enjoy that one. <laughs> Too, to the good spirits for hanging out. And they might enjoy some as well. Mm. This stuff is sweet cattail. I'll offer this one to the all those unseen ones. <laughs> Too. Sorry, it's not as sweet as last night. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed our winter fire <clears throat> overnight and uh, foraging today. It's definitely been a lot of fun. Um, I'd like to stay out here longer, but um, duty calls. <laughs> work, baby, gotta work. And um, But I'll be back out before too long, so... Um, when I do, I'll bring the camera and hopefully have some more adventures to share. So I was a little out of it then <laughs> this weekend. Man, so tired, but um, it's like this, right? Yeah. So anyways, have a good one, y'all. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs>